podcast star. <laughs> the podcast star. <laughs> <laughs> Wannabe star. Here we are at Ghetto Fabulous Productions with the Calling All Heroes Comics Podcast, where we take one step forward and eight steps back. Uh, I'm George, and I am joined with Tim today. How's it going? Gary. Hello. And Walls. Hey, hey, hey. And then there were four, the original crew. We, right. may, we may be joined by special guest Chris Apple, and if he uh, doesn't make it, I know he listens to the podcast, so for shame. So, <laughs> all right. That being said. <laughs> What's going on, man? Not a whole lot. <laughs> We can. It's not 30 degrees. <laughs> they say, yeah. not a whole lot. All right, guys. Well, thanks. Hey, we'll see you guys next <laughs> well, week. We'll see you later. Wow. <laughs> Big gulps, huh? Yeah. We'll All see right. you later. <laughs> and beef sticks. Yes. Yeah. Let's not go there. Yeah. We're selling, some beef. We're selling some beef sticks here at the store if anybody wants to stop by. Yeah, stop in. <laughs> Bring lots of water. <laughs> Hydrate. Take that guy's wallet. Oh, I think this is the... First time that there's only been one person in the room wearing a comic book related shirt. It's because we're, we're on video now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually, yeah, we're, we're not wearing we're anything. Up I, I'm only wearing a loincloth. <laughs> I don't know. Some music critics would consider uh, Kiss clowns or <laughs> yeah, cartoon yeah, characters. Yeah. I always thought of Kiss as the professional wrestling of rock and roll. It's like kind of. Uh, that's not an insult. I mean, that's a. Yeah. That's a that's a that's a positive. Well, they thing. always talked about that. That's you know that's the kind of show they wanted to see. They wanted to see, I guess, when they were going out seeing rock and roll acts. You know, uh, they wanted to see the the full package, music and you know lights and you know all the all the excitement. So that's I mean that was a premise of why they did what they did. They wanted to see a more of a theatrical thing, I guess you'd say. Yeah, you know, working out. Which was sort of, I mean, <laughs> which was sort of started yeah. somewhat. I think was akin to uh, Alice Cooper, whom I know they, they always make mention of, too. You know, they, they liked that. They thought that was really cool instead of guys coming out in blue jeans and T-shirts, which I don't think there's anything wrong with that either. You know, right, I, I sure. Music is music. I like music for what it is. I can close my eyes. It doesn't matter what it looks like. But that was their premise. You know, They wanted to see a big, big-time show. I think my son refuses to watch a video, a music video. Like He's huge yeah. into music. I mean, he, he probably knows more songs than I do at this stage of the game because it's... Well, he spends all his free time listening to music, downloading it, has it on his phone. But yeah, he, I, I bet you he has never seen a video. He's like, as soon as one starts, like, I don't want to see it. He's like, I have a picture in my head of what this is, right? And that's what I want, and I don't want that, you know, basically. I, I did that with um, Bob Seger put out a he put a couple new songs out, but he put out a Greatest Hits for the first time, and he uh, did a video for Night Moves, I think it was. And as soon as I, as soon as it started coming on, I'm, I'm probably reacting like Max did. I turned it off because I didn't want to see it. Yeah. For years, I've had you know the the pictures in my head and the imagery sure. of the songs. That's I didn't want does. anything to do with. And there again, if you come up with the '80s, you know, jump, you automatically think of Van Halen's, you know, six hundred dollar video. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. True. Yeah. So it dust on the I, keyboard, saw, dust yeah, on the keyboard, all that. It'd be like all of a sudden, hey, we're gonna make a video for Stairway to Heaven. It's like now. Yeah. yeah. No, that's not going to work out. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah, because th- like you said, I think everybody has their image in their head. Like with certain songs, you know, the iconic songs or just songs mm-hmm. that stir up images, which most music I think does anyway. I mean, that's, well, that's the point of it. You know? And I remember saying that, and it, it was it was one of those things where I was like, "Come on, this is cool." Like I get you don't want to watch them yeah. as a rule, but watch this. This is neat or whatever. Yeah, and see, then, see, aha, take on me. You know? Yeah, you know, <laughs> uh, the yeah, you know, it's iconic. You know, yeah. For me, one of the quintessential Absolutely. videos was Uptown Girl. I don't know. It just it felt oh, like it yeah. told a story. Yeah. You know, it just it felt like, you know, to me, I can remember my dad saying like, "That's kind of what I thought MTV was going to be was these stories being told against the music." And for the most yeah. part, it was. I mean, my dad's you know a little a little bit older than than all of us, but he was very much like, "No, it's a bunch of it's a bunch of idiots it's standing crap. around." Yeah, crap. basically. Uh, well, all of a sudden, uh, all of a sudden, singers had like to be actors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. I and mean, all of a sudden, everyone had to be Al Pacino. Yeah. And, and <laughs> what a scary world. Yeah. <laughs> what segue into that, whenever you guys read comic books and all your uh, listeners out there, do you guys have the voices, you know, oh, to, to the characters? Because I think that sometimes, you know, we talk about movies and sort of, you know, I'm on the fence on a lot of the movies because the fact they put people in there and they don't sound or look like I thought they would. There's always going back to the Batman. That's probably the biggest one for me, is the you know the bat the Michael Keaton Batman. Yeah. Where the Joker does not Nicholson, great actor, and Keaton's a great actor, but neither one of them physically look like I thought they would. Yeah. 
I mean, the Joker looks like he was been on Prozac for about <laughs> 15 years too long. Yeah. You know, he de- he does not physically yeah. look like it. And Michael Keaton's about my size. <laughs> and they put him in this this outfit, this cow that he can't even move his head. And he is a defensive guy. Yeah. You don't put Bruce Lee in a big... You know, yeah. fake you know, fake uh, chest and everything uh, like that. Yeah, yeah. where well, he's uh, sitting there, he, he's fighting people, and he can't even turn his head to yeah. see where they're coming uh, from. Yeah, and that's that's the kind of thing that uh, maybe going back to the video. Sometimes you you see stuff, and that's like that's not how I imagine things. That was not yeah. doesn't yeah. match your imagination. The movies were entertaining, but I know a lot of people go back and forth on. Well, is there? Um, I've got to believe though that with all of us, there's at least something that we saw. I'm trying to think how to say this. Something that we saw that was comic book inspired where you got a voice in your head before you read the comic. Like, did any of you guys see the Batman, Adam West show before you ever read the comic? Or or no? Like, I mean, obviously there's a lot of things you read the comic first, but is there anything that you read or have read in your life that was a comic book, but you saw some other media in that to where you were exposed to a voice? Like, for me, I get the Darth Vader comic. I know what Darth Vader sounds like. They draw Darth Vader exactly like he looks in the movies that's true. right you know what i mean like like i hear it in my head and i don't know i mean i like i like that and of course that's one of the rare things that i a comic book come from a movie as right vice versa right and but i mean i guess is there any examples in your lives where it might as well have been true for you like again i, I can't say that i don't read batman and hear adam west's voice yeah, it's not funny. It's not goofy. It's I'll not you, camp like that. Or like the Spider Man cartoon. Well, I don't know if this is on the line, but that's exactly where I was going. I, I can't believe you mentioned that. I'm thinking about Spider Man. I always, I just the voice of Jameson is the '67 cartoon. Yeah. Oh. However, um, I can't think of his name. Was he's a wonderful actor that played him in in the, the movies. Parker. I mean, it yeah. just. It, oh yeah. It just he he, he does a great job. Yeah, I mean, for me, it. I'm yeah, like but, yeah, but he, he kept that he alive doing, really well. Is he doing the cartoon? <laughs> yeah. But. Well, that made me think because I was like, he had you know he's got he you know I think he was like, oh yeah, these fans probably really dig this. You know, this yeah. is pretty cool. I, I'm not I'm not sure that's right, but I I would pretty much bet money on it. He he, he saw those cartoons and went, yes, yeah, is what I'm going to go for because it, it just. It well, almost have to be. When I was yeah. in late middle school and early <coughs> high school, every month I was reading Phase S four, I was hearing the voice of the thing from the the sixties cartoon. Cartoon, yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. Sure. yeah. The gravelly oh, sure. low voice. Yeah, yeah. 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 And uh And of course, you know, I remember uh, I don't know if you guys ever read this, but people they have books and literature and they you know, they're high praise for it. And then you have movies and and people put you know, they give awards for it and everything. And you put those two things together and you have a comic book. <laughs> you have pictures and words, yeah. and people call it crap. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I remember hearing that, and I'm like, that's not too cool. Yeah. But, yeah. That's, but that's, do you guys, you know, I'm sure whenever we all read it, and we segue in between because it's, the pictures obviously not, are not flowing. There's a lot going on between each frame, each panel, right? So you're right. imagining that, which is pretty cool for Like transitions books. and things? Yeah, with, with books and stuff, you have to imagine everything. Yeah. If you read Lord of the Rings, you have to, However, Tolkien is yeah. describing it. You have to sure get an image of that. But but like if a thing's walking down Yancey Street and it's pouring down rain and there's a panel and you only see the sidewalk, you know he's in a bigger a big city and you don't. Yeah, you've already seen him like walk a city block. Yeah, right? which is really cool. But it all takes place in your mind very quickly. Yeah, yeah. Which, which I'm sure is open to interpretation. Are there any? Uh, I mean, is this? Are there any books the other way around? Are there any comics that? You enjoyed the media, like Star Wars, and then I, I want to read the comic because I love the movie. Is there anything that that originated outside of comics that then became a comic and it was something that you you were interested in? I had somebody in the other day that was into Dune, came in and wanted to buy the miniseries from the eighties, which you obviously didn't have. No, <laughs> <laughs> I have the Godzilla comics that that Marvel did. Oh, know, that's and I cool. was always a big Godzilla fan. The comics. I don't want to throw any shade there. You know, some of the covers are cool, and some of the interior work is okay. But it was, I just, just I bought that one because of the fact that I loved Godzilla. I mean, as a right. kid, as a kid, I loved that. You know, not necessarily um, enamored with the comic book. I have some of them. You know, they're, they're pretty cool. But yeah. um, Space Ghost. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. Barbera stuff. Yeah, me yeah. Too. Future yep. Quest. Yes. Is, Herculoids yep. has been. Yes. Uh, yeah. Pretty, yeah. pretty good. Yeah, they're they're uh, coming. They get around. they get Steve Root who draws yeah. just like Alex Toth and mm-hmm. does a great job. Um, 
Ape Look, and all that. Old but Presty did a really cool cover. Adam Son uh, cover. It was a really yeah. neat looking cover. One well, of the new issues, the next two or three of them are going to be Herculoids. Because mm -hmm. I know they went from Space yep. Ghost to... Yeah. I may pick up on this. I love the like Herculoids. Birdman. Like Birdman, yeah. And then... Um, yeah. I can't Bird remember. Man. It's not Thundar. It's <laughs> Mighty... Mitor. Mitor, yeah. yeah. And now it's going to be Herculoids. And then after that, I ha it's going to go to Johnny Quest. Yawn. Yeah. I can keep that stuff. Stuff. <laughs> and of course, there were comic books stuff. back then of the Hanna Barbera stuff. Yeah. But yeah. It was a cartoon first. Yep. Yeah. So that'll be my uh, nomination. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Alex Toth. Yeah. I can't really think Simple. of anything on that, along that lines. But really? Yeah. I mean, it just seems like it's always been around. What about Six Million Dollar Man? Yeah. What, uh, like Kevin Smith's stuff? Take on it or? I mean, there was, was just the order of like the old the old appearance. comic wasn't that the old six million dollar man comic like that um, came out. I mean, I had some from like the late yeah that 70s had to be after the, the show I would think right after when, the show. Well, I mean, it was originally there's, there's David a, David Cassidy comic books yeah oh, yeah that was told, definitely inspired by the TV show uh, the TV show was actually from uh, <laughs> several books that's that liberal use of that word Gary okay. inspired yeah, yeah, they, were, they were actual novels okay. remember the love sure. beads How, there was no uh, uh, yeah. there was no uh, expiration date I thought maybe we could order those love beads we could <laughs> that's but the I mean, podcast they, they took they a the, for the worst yeah, yeah they do all the cartoons like you've got Rugrats Rick and Morty behind you yeah, yeah. well and they did Masters of the Universe Transformers Voltron you know on down the line uh yeah. <laughs> hey, I have something interesting that I don't want to forget about. I just was thinking about it. I wanted to hear everybody chime in on. Um, I saw, I think we're all members of that one Marvel page. Like, you have to had to request to be a member, and it just has, like, the stuff from the 60s and 70s on there. Um, they were, like, there was, I guess, some people went to the Silicon Valley Con. Stan Lee was doing a signing there, and they said it's, like, there's been a lot of allegations of, like, elder, elder abuse, abuse with him. Like, apparently, you know, of course, Joni died, you know, who was, I'm sure, accompanying him all the time, and he had a, a very good lawyer friend who was, you know, had his best interest at heart. And apparently, I mean, whoever's handling him now, or whoever's managing his life and what he does, apparently, it's maybe forcing him to do things that, you know, you know, I, I the person posted a picture of the comic book, and you saw the signature, and the signature, you know, I've seen Stan Lee's audit, I mean, he's, you know, he's pumping them out, but it just looked very... Like, you know, it, it could have been like a, a scribble, you know. And they were saying that before <clears throat> the the group that they were in, before they got their book signed, like that they watched and he had to take like a half hour nap. Yeah. And they said he looked very bad, like yeah. really fatigued and really did not. They felt very uncomfortable even being in the situation. That they, but to be honest, I, when you see the uh, <clears throat> uh, promos and stuff for a lot of conventions, he's out there as much as anybody. Yeah, the guy's what ninety two years old. Ninety four. Uh, yeah, I thought yeah. he has to oh, say not, Yeah, he's yeah. I thought ninety. Yeah, you know, he just turned ninety four. Yeah. But in reference to that, I hope that we don't find behind the music, you know, like a sad story, you know, the latter sure. years of Stan Lee, because what? it seems up till recently he's on it. Yeah. Well, and you know, I, I oh, yeah, you know, I mean, yeah, he's he's out I, there swinging. I had some friends that went and saw him at Awesome Con this past year, yeah. and they said that when he went through the line, that he had some glasses on, uh, like they were kind of tinted, and that he wasn't cognizant of what was going on. He was signing things, but he wasn't reacting in any way, shape, or form. Right. And so I just, I wonder, at the age of 94 years old, if him sitting there, like, if he's not getting anything out of it, maybe that means it's time to stop. The number he was getting last year, they had this big article about it, and I think I talked about it on the show, he was getting almost a quarter of a million dollars for a three-day appearance. I mean, at 94. Five or ninety four. How much money does he, he does need? It. I don't think he needs that money, but someone I think associated with him is wanting sure, to they're, this they're out. Keeping it because on. I read and I continued to read the post, and there were numerous people that commented on their personal experiences that were similar. Yeah, like someone yeah, said that yeah. they had to tell him how to spell his name and stuff. I read that. Yeah. It's like really. I mean, like I'm with you. It's time to quit. Yeah. 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 Or, that's, or that's it's time happen, to yeah. investigate who is for if, if yeah. someone is truly forcing him to do this. It's like you wait know, a second, you know. One yeah, of the, but that's when it's getting stupid and ugly, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. Well, and and if you didn't get his autograph by now, I mean, sorry, but come on, guys. Yeah. yeah. Well, and it's out there. It's there like yeah, you there's enough of them out there. Yeah, yeah I was going to say, if you're one. spending a lot of yeah. money on comic books and you really just want to have one, you can find yourself. You know, you get yourself one. I think there's few groups of people that are more fervent in what they do than comic book fans, pop culture fans in general. Mm -hmm. And I think that if something comes out 
that says, hey, Stan Lee's being treated badly, I look for there to be a huge fan-based backlash yeah. that will maybe make it so that it's no longer profitable to have him at a show. Well, I mean, yeah, this post, you, this post was like they were all very up in arms about you know yeah. something like that taking place. It's know, like if they said tomorrow, Stan Lee's, let, let's just say this blows up over the next couple of weeks and you get more of that and it becomes like more or less considered a, 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 a factor. Somebody's brought up on charges. And then next week they say, oh, in Hagerstown, Stan Lee's going to be there. It's 50 bucks to go meet him. I don't know that I'd do that under those those conditions. I, I You'd have to have yeah. enough respect for the yeah. guy that gave us some, had a hand in giving us so yeah, I'd, much. I'd probably take a pass on that. Yeah. 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 Well, I am, he'll vouch for this, I am a rabid collector of signatures. No, but yeah, I would sure. not do it at the expense of anyone. I mean, if you know, right. I, just, I just, you know, it, no way. You know, if someone said, well, yeah, you know, okay, you're here. Okay, we're going to do this, you know. But, you know, so-and-so is not well. You know, I'll be like, you know, I don't, that's, what kind of fun is that? Because part of it is also the exchange of meeting someone and talking to them. So for me, that's a very important aspect of it. Right. And I, I don't, you know, if I could see that someone is seriously, you know, not themselves, that's not cool. Yeah. It's just not cool. Yeah. yeah. And it's also not cool to do the assembly line, you know, um, Adam West behind closed Good doors. Point. Yeah. Don't even take a picture of the Batmobile kind of. What if a man I can't? I don't get anything out of that. Yeah, yeah. if he can't interact, just buy I, it from someone. <laughs> yeah. That's what I argue. You know, it's got to be that yeah. moment. It's got to be that, hey, I met Stan. He was wonderful. Hey, I yeah. met Adam West. And what an experience. I asked him a question to it. It's just yeah. that connection. It's got it's, it's got to be quick because I understand the assembly line. You know, you're not going to yeah. get 15 minutes with Stan Lee and ask him right. all, all the questions you want to. It's not going to happen. Yeah. Uh, point not, being, not, not now. Yeah, point being, with the experience thing you guys talking about, we... We took uh, Cody's uh, Yamaha acoustic guitar up to a signing in, in up around Pittsburgh. Uh, it was a comic toy kind of thing, but mm-hmm. uh, Peter Tork was there. And um, there wasn't a whole lot of people you know, from the monkeys. There wasn't a whole lot of people around his table. I mean, there was people there looking at, you know, the prints and whatever you can yeah. sign. And there's like all this, this, and this. You know, typical, you pay this, you get this. You pay this, you get that. You know? Sure. But um, he, we wanted him to sign Cody's guitar. And he's like, ah, sure. And he picked up and started tuning it. And it's just I got I, I got my cell phone out and I like got a picture of him tuning Cody's guitar, and Cody's just standing there talking to him. And of course, Cody had it, you know, and he had it drop down and stuff. And he started playing. He's like, "Whoa!" And he starts tuning it to how he likes it, you know. And it's like, man, I've never changed that. I will just leave it yeah. exactly, <laughs> yeah. you know. But uh, you know, it's got the Captain America uh, shield sticker on it, so you know, yeah. we call that the monkey's guitar. So that's awesome. He's got uh, see the monkeys are touring this summer. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. cool. What's left of them? Yeah, you know. Boom. So. And Nesmith. Yeah, Nesmith and uh, Dolan's. I don't think Peter Tork's going to be with him. Oh, really? Yeah, just those two guys. But uh, it was it was like maybe 10 minutes. Oh, that's cool. And, yeah, I paid paid my money, and, you know, we got our autographs and stuff. He signed an album for me, and um, he, when we were leaving, he was like, thanks for giving me your money. <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah thank you. So, but it, it's, it's, it's all about the experience, so yeah. it is... Oh, he and I, cool we thing. got to share the one with Brian Bowl, and I was, that, that's probably for me, what, of all the signings, you know, of course, me, you know, talking with Bernie and stuff like that, but of all the signings, that, that experience with Brian Bowl and only calling us over in small portions, and, and that we actually, you and I got to chat, I mean, we really got to chat with him. Well, yeah, as always, it's that like, was that was like I, I that's one of my favorite memories. Just real people. That's one of my favorite yeah. memories from a signing, just because it was, it was just it was it was neat. He was very personal. Yeah. But the thing is, you wait all your life to meet these people, and you got all kind of questions. You get up here and say, mm-hmm. "Hi, big fan. <laughs> uh, I'm yeah, your biggest big, fan. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> hey, can you uh, sign my book? Uh, and then you walk like away. You're like, why didn't I ask him that question? You <laughs> know, that's great. Yeah. I can't believe I can't pull his name out of my head, but um, guy does hillbilly and the goon. Eric Powell. Eric Powell. He was yeah. super cool. When I, oh, absolutely. I walked in, and, and I mean, I, I was reading Hillbilly up to that point. Like, it was only like one or two issues, but I had never read The Goon, I, to be mm-hmm. honest. I still haven't. Um, I know a guy. I, yeah, some, I was thinking yeah, that. Got some. Yeah. So I. But I, I had actually gone over <coughs> to make sure that, you know, to see if I get something that, that you wanted. And so I went over to talk to him, and it was like you meet the guy before you know the work type thing. He was super cool, and I was shocked that nobody else was there. Yeah. I mean, I stood there and talked to him for, I don't know, eight or ten minutes, yeah. and... Nobody mm-hmm. walked up. I mean, people would kind of walk by, but throughout the day, I, I'd see it every now and again. He might have one or two people, but it's not that. 
not that situation where there's 30 people in line and every one of them have an agenda. You know he, what I mean? He did, yeah. these, he did these really cool covers. Um, they had this Monster Month at Marvel. He did these really cool, like a series. There was four. There was a, four issues, like a, um, where monsters dwell, and like they re, they re, brought their titles back, and he just did like one shots, and he did all the covers to them. And I, I walked up, and there was nobody around. I, I talked to him for at least 10 minutes, just hanging just out. Just hanging out. I, and I, I, and I did that until somebody else came up. I'm like, you know what? <laughs> well, yeah, why not? This. He saw. He goes, oh, look, he goes monsters. You know, we were just talking about monsters and stuff, and it was it was super cool. And I waited. You know, somebody else started forming a line. I said, hey, thank you for time. He's like, no, thank you, man. Cool. You know, walk yeah. away. It was really neat. Yeah, but when Bernie Wrightson was there, I walked yeah. directly right up to him. Yeah, yeah. I did too. It was all more same deal for me. And you're like, wow, people. You just want to turn around and yell at the rest of the people at the convention. <laughs> what are you yeah. doing? There's 10,000 people here. Guys, did you, did you, did know, you know this is funny right there? Yeah. 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 you have any idea who this is? Yeah. You know? I walked up to him at the Baltimore show and I said, hey, is there any way you might be able to just throw a sketch or something real quick on this board? I mean, it was as soon as the con opened and no, nobody else was standing there. He said, I'm sorry. And he kind of did this yeah. move and yeah. went, I'm sorry. I, I'm not yeah. sketching today. I said, uh, I understand. Would, would you mind signing your name? He goes, well, we'll make it fancy. And he took up the whole board yeah. and did it. Cool. And, and I still have that. Yeah, yeah. I so. noticed uh, towards, I guess, some of the last signings got from him, he, he held the pen, the pen very... He would put it in between Different. his fingers, like not not like you would hold a pen. He sort of clamped it in between his when he was signing. Yeah, he's, his hands were really drawn. I mean, he was having a lot of trouble. And, and that's that. a crime considering yeah. how spectacular. Yeah. You know, looking at your shirt and stuff, yeah. which you can't see, but you can hear about it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, spectacular. You imagine what it would have been like. <laughs> yeah. He's a true, I, I think... You know, icon i miss more i mean i miss that that whole the last experience was very sad because he was you know i you know i guess he was going through his treatments his head was shaved and he was in a wheelchair that's the last time i remember i got a print signed and there was a ton of people in line you know and it just it was just a weird feeling because you know all those times that we've seen him you know, uh, you know how the many, clock yeah, was ticking i you you just knew you know yeah. well you didn't know. i mean you know this, he seemed he was cheerful sure and i thought you know well you know my mother's went through you know you know cancer and things like that it's, it's an awful thing but you always think eh, you know, some people you know they're going to get you know it's going to you know they're going to well, make I've, a comeback you well know? how about this you see the uh like the baltimore comic-con and, and you know they i keep telling you who's coming who's coming yeah. who's coming and then you go there and it's like canceled 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 yeah and you're like you know maybe they had a serious you know yeah. we're thinking of us I can't believe I'm not going to get my blah 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 sign, you know. And they're yeah. like, some people got the nerve, yeah. not showing up. Yeah, if we're not showing yeah. up, and you know, maybe they missed a flight. <laughs> How maybe something else come <laughs> up? Maybe you know, emergency. Yeah. <laughs> we were at uh, the Pittsburgh show before they moved it over to the other, the new. When it was in the Monroeville Expo Mart, yep, right. you know, I remember us getting there and there being a list of like five or six people, and out of them, like four of them, I I really wanted to see, and and six there people, they're like yeah. none of them are coming, <laughs> and I was like. Are you freaking kidding me? I was so mad. Oh, so yeah. there, my buddy Dave Cage, he goes, maybe they had something serious going on. My guess is they're not calling off coming here the way you call off going to work every week. <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> he's great. like, I think you're projecting yeah. what you would have done on these people. Yeah. Well, like, I think a lot of those uh, artists, uh, as you know, they have to draw 20, 22 pages a month. And yeah. you take a whole weekend off. Or, or like and travel. Or like Rob Liefeld, he has to draw like six splash pages a month. Yeah. yeah. I mean. Or a <laughs> Drawing on that foot, <laughs> but uh, anyway, sorry. <laughs> no, that was it. Yeah, that was it. <laughs> no, that's that's definitely that was it true. I got really interrupted. <laughs> Central. Oh. 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 oh, that's great. Oh. <laughs> but it's true. Oh. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Uh, say some Arnold would say. Nice. <laughs> I'd grab a, grab a hold of Tim and set him up like he's a little doll. <laughs> That's <laughs> fun. <laughs> you do the job. Uh, yeah. The Andre the Giant documentary was on HBO and it was freaking awesome. It was sad and really touching, but yeah. Schwarzenegger's on there, and he might as well be a cartoon. That's the only, that's the next evolutionary step for Arnold Schwarzenegger, is he just becomes he's animated. Be animated. He's yes. going to be animated. Yeah. <laughs> Preserved forever. Yeah. yeah. Well, and that, and they should get him to say every word in the dictionary um, and just record it. Recorder, that way that they yeah. can use him forever, because, you know, they can... For the weather. With, yeah, with digital now, <laughs> they can, they can like, put an inflection in his voice, yeah. up like or down. But, coming in. And, and, and at first, it'll sound really crappy, and it'll be like, you are listening to... D W T B O radio, but then they'll get it better and better as they go. <laughs> yeah, the future's looking bright. 
here at Calling All Heroes. Hey, if I can throw in a real quick plug, uh, the save the date. <laughs> like we're going to stop you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Forget it's, it, George. It's your phone, your store. <laughs> Or is there a nickel? Now, derail George, everybody. Fine. You are stopping it. Anyway, you were saying? Yes. Uh, <laughs> Save the date. Yeah, damn hell you say. Uh, it's the only reason I'm allowed on the podcast, people. <laughs> uh, free Comic Book Day is the first Saturday in May every single year. This is um, the 15th year for Free Comic Book Day. Here uh, May 5th, 2018, and there are a ton of books. And when we're done this podcast... They shipped me the books yesterday, so nice. I have two giant boxes of all the the free stuff, so we can cool look I through like it. Stuff. Yeah, so check you're it out. Put them in the vault till then. Uh, yeah, yeah, we're not allowed to. Yeah. I don't move them, but um, you know, it was funny because last year was you know the second year, obviously that I, we had done this. The second year we were open. The first year was crazy. I mean, I just couldn't believe how many people came in. Last year was really, really good. It was about seventy five percent of what the first year was. And so this year uh, we have put our nose to the grindstone and pulled really, out all the stops. Really are we're doing uh, a, a bunch of other things as far as like the promotion of it. We're reaching out a lot further. Uh, I was really surprised to see just how far you can go into West Virginia without finding anything uh, in the way of a comic store that participates in this. Huh. Sure. So one of the things that I, I just really wanted to point out is if you go to some of the bigger cities to the to the um, a free comic book day. They immediately put a limit. It's free comic book day, but you get one or right. two or three. And here, you get a copy of every book that you want to read. Um, I have right now uh, 1,200 books, and there should be another six or 700 coming in the next week wow. or two. So if you want, if you come to the shop and you're not required to buy a thing, but there's going to be food and refreshments, we're going to have some artist sketches. Uh, Wonder to, Woman's going to be here. Wonder Woman's going to cool, be here. Yeah. Yeah. For pictures and <laughs> that's not you, is it? <laughs> Shh, don't give it away now. Come on, Buzzkill. I think we figured out how all those women got populated right. on that island. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, thank you very yeah, much. Just, just here, I'm just, yeah. there's another Wonder Woman here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing to see here. <laughs> Move along. Behind <laughs> here with me for a little bit. But um, yeah. <laughs> Another segue there. In addition to thousands of comic books we're giving away for free, I mean, we'll have some food. We'll have Wonder Woman here for pictures. We'll have uh, some some uh, artist sketches and things. We're also going to be doing some drawings and giveaways and all that fun stuff. Uh, but there's also going to be some exclusive um, free comic book day merchandise for the first time. Like there's some little statues and some Harley Quinn stuff that they're going to uh, be sending in that we're going to be oh. able to give away or oh, cool. set at a price that's practically giving it away. Yeah. So um, it's. I think it's it's going to be a whole lot of fun. I'm really looking forward to doing it. It's from noon to five on Saturday, May the fifth, at Calling All Heroes Comics, Fifty Stately Street in Wiley Ford, West Virginia. Yeah. So, yeah. I'll be getting yeah. the comic book Volkswagen out of mothballs. Oh yeah. I'll be bringing cool. that out. That's awesome. With the Calling All Heroes sponsored logo on the roof. <laughs> I've been intensely rebagging and boarding every comic book in the store. I'm about thirty percent done. I ordered another four thousand bags and four thousand boards. To go through and do, and I have uh, thirty boxes, long boxes coming, new ones. So hopefully, my goal was by the time that show, you know, that day gets here, we're kind of completely renovated, revamped, Clean slate. Yeah, you know, and uh, I like it. That's the goal. I think it'll cool. be. I think it'll be a good, good time. So, so I was looking at the uh, Superman uh, gold-plated box there. Yeah. Um, when is that coming out this week? Yeah, yeah, this Wednesday. Superman 1000? Action Comics, uh, Action 1000. Comics 1000. With all 750 variants for the low, low, low ripoff price of seven ninety nine a copy. Yeah, we that's have... why I only got one. <laughs> you guys look at your face. It's like... <laughs> I'm listening. Did you order all ten of them? <laughs> nah, I just ordered one of them. Yeah, me too. So, Which one did you order? The dude. The rude dude? The dude. Rude the dude? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I got... Uh, I ordered all rude. I'll tell you what I did was I ended up 60s. ordering. I don't have any Superman comics, so I'm not going to start with. Not going to participate. Wow! Hey, <laughs> good, good job you. On point. There's a yeah. goal, you know. Work your way back. Yeah, I'm, I, and I, I'm, I'm very exactly. obviously picking the cheapest ones first. Yeah, you know? I'm sorry. But I just I, no. I'm, Hey man, sorry, not no, sorry. this is a no bash. I've just never hey, been Chip, a super. Chip's player. right there with you. Chip has no Superman comics. Uh, like you said, though, it's a very personal thing. The collection. And it's like buy it because everybody else is. Nah, I'm yeah. buying it because I like Allred. Right. Sure. Well, and I mean, you know, 
it's Superman. I can see that there's an argument, even if you don't read it. Obviously, if you don't want it, don't buy it. But I think there's an argument where there's going to be people buying it because it's, it's... Yeah, but case in point, that a lot of the... the uh, have just hit Thor. Uh, yeah. Hulk. Big uh, numbers. Spider-Man. Spider 800 big coming numbers, up. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of these have hit, you know, the milestones. Yeah. But, I mean, nobody's hit 1,000 yet. Um, somebody was in the other day, and they went, what about Batman 1 million? Remember that came out? Like, like <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, that didn't How'd that work out? This is a legit 1,000, though. <laughs> but, uh, no, we got the regular cover, and then they have a variant, a 1930s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, and 2000s variant. Uh, so there's, there's 11 variants in addition to the regular cover, and then there's other variants that aren't even orderable. I don't even know how those popped up. I guess they're by the store. Mm-hmm. Like kind of like that Legends of the Dark Knight thing. Well, well like, some, like some Midtown store, Comics has yeah, a variant. Some big yeah. stores yeah. have their own oh, variants. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's like $8 billion to one. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't know the name of the artist, and I should, but the guy that was doing the B covers to Supergirl, where they're painted. Have, have, you, have you guys seen any of those? Um, Are you talking about... Um, well, the Art Germ? Stuff? Art Germ. Stuff. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Low or Lauer, or however you say. Yeah, he got... Signed to do all the B covers on Superman after this for a while. So, huh. yeah, he, I think we had this conversation about those variants. It's like, yeah, we, um, we beat it to death, but we'll keep beating it. No, it's just, it's just, you know, That's you true. just need to say no to it. Yeah, you know, you yeah, I'm oh, sure. No. It's like it's sixty have, dollars well, for you, that yeah, with a different cover. I'm like, uh, no, uh, you can't because with sixty dollars, I can, I can go get a lot of other cool comics. Well, there was I, mean, a, I don't need a, a, the same comic book with a different cover on it. It was gonna be sixty bucks. Well, there are like seventy five covers for the the Legend of the Dark Knight, and they did like a book of the actual covers. Yeah, they you can know? sell you a book <laughs> of the really? covers. Yeah, you well, can't afford these, but here's a book that has all the covers in it. Well, DK three number I one. Didn't buy. If you bought a thousand of them, you got you know you could buy the one copy that was a Frank Miller cover. I mean, he didn't do the interior; he just did a cover. Yeah. And I saw that cover. <laughs> And it wasn't anything special. Not impressive. But yet they sold them for seven fifty each. Now I'm thinking for seven fifty, you can probably get a piece of Frank Miller art, modest, like a, a sketch? sketch. Oh yeah. And you know what? I'll tell you right now that cover <coughs> that he did the one in one thousand. His contribution to that was nothing but a sketch. Now, like some people got in there on the computer and colored it up and made it pretty. But mm-hmm. I mean, you know, yeah. When you can start buying original art by the artist that did the variant and for cheaper than the variant. <laughs> That's kind of the direction I would personally like to go. Right. I'm anxiously awaiting that milestone there. Spawn 300, 300 yeah. 16 books away. That's awesome. And it's consistent. It's been, it won't be, you know, like back in the day, you'd be waiting and waiting. I mean, that book is consistent. That yeah. book is very yeah, it's consistent. On, it's on time. It's, all, it's always yeah. on time. Do you remember when the Spawn first came out, number four was behind, and you had to wait until like, like number six or seven came out, then they retroed four. Do you remember? You know that? why? Because they put that coupon in that thing. That's what it was. It had that. It had that Young Blood Zero coupon or something. It had a coupon that you mm. you could you you sent in. Yeah, it had something to do. I remember that. Yeah, because yeah. mine has the coupon. And I remember. It, actually, yeah. if you look at it, the, a couponed book is worth a little bit more than a non coupon book. It's just yeah, it has yeah. a violator cover on it. Number four. Yeah, I got but one there, over there. Yeah, yeah, there was something with. It was it it was cute. It was relating to the coupon. You, you cut it out and you could send away for some. I can't remember. It was another you know image book, obviously. But I don't remember what it was. <laughs> I'm sure you had that Young Blood Zero. Yeah, no. I think that's what it was. I think. <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> well, Young Blood is the. Uh, it was the book that sort of turned me against Image, because I sat there and I think we just I might have mentioned this, but everybody in the book was a superhero. It's like you can't be a superhero. If you got if that budget, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If, if, if everyone's in spandex, then who needs then help if you're all superheroes? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and it's like, yeah, and everybody that might have been in jeans that was a superhero looked like I had spandex on. So I was yeah. just sort of like, um, I'm, and I remember, you know, when I mean, you fall out of love with things, you know what I'm talking sure. about. I thought maybe it was the speed lines that did you in, man. Because I mean, I love. No, that. I, no, and like I said, I think They're I thought great. I did some really cool <laughs> stuff. They're great. <laughs> And I've seen some original art of him, you know, double page, you know, like, was it Bad Rock was his name? Yeah. Pretty cool stuff. Very dynamic. But, yeah, it just, like I said, it, it just, it runs thin in a hurry. Yeah, that's a great way to you play. You know what's funny? When we saw that, I liked it better, but we, they had a couple pages. Whoa, whoa. Was that I mean, Anthony? Get, was that get, Anthony's that we were looking at? Who had that? Yeah, probably Anthony's collectible. Yeah, but it looked it looked much better in the like the 
the sketch, the black and white. It looked, it looked, yeah. it, but I thought it did. I thought mm -hmm. it, it came across much better that way. No, I thought his art had a lot of energy to it. Like I said, it just, it just, it just didn't progress. It, it, you know, it's funny you say that because it's like it does. It's like it's almost like the color can take away. That was my worry starting to color your stuff was it's so striking in black and white and just looks so dynamic and solid and confident. And I was like, ah. Like, I put a color in, and I'm just like, I can't, I don't want to take away from this in any way. And there was, mm -hmm. there was just certain panels where I was like, okay, what am I going to do? And it would take longer to do one panel than maybe a whole page. I was like, I, this has to at least yeah. remain as good as it is, not yeah. make it worse. Yeah. <laughs> you know, make it well, bad. I remember Jim Lee talking about, you know, whenever you shrink it down and everything. Because, they, you know, they draw 10 by 15, and we saw some of those, you know, early adventures, you know, that Kirby, I mean, it's... I forget what the size of. They're crazy. They're big. like half again as big, weren't they? Right. I yes. Mean, humongous, and and just the uh, black and white. Even like airs or heck, you know, some of our guys that aren't the, you know, our favorites. Really cool to see original artwork. It just yeah. jumps out at you where the page sometimes doesn't do it, especially the old, yeah. the printed. Yeah. To see a Kirby page, an actual Kirby page, and see how black all the inks are and the Senate ink. You're like, wow, that's. That's craftsmanship right yeah. there. My Alex Nino page, I mean, I look, I get the, the House of Secrets, I look at the comic book page and look at it, I, the black and white, the original artwork, it's yeah. just, it's a million times better than looking at the actual page. I think those those Kyle Hodes pages yep. are better in black and white uh, than absolutely. the color yeah. that yep. got put on them. Yep. Yeah. Well, speaking of, uh, well, not Kyle Hodes, but um, our favorite artist and stuff, C. Jones is going to be on Batman for a while. Yeah. Coming up. That's so, awesome. Yep. Yeah. He, he shared a couple pages yesterday yep. and he's like... Well, if the people like it, I guess I'll stay on it for a while. I'm like, yeah, he's going to be on it for a while. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So I was, I was, it would be awesome if he came to Baltimore. Yeah, it'd yeah. be great. We've tried. I've, yeah, I've requested. <laughs> We've tried. Yeah, every uh, year I send him a list of uh, yep. people I want to see at the Baltimore Comic Con on their Facebook. You know what we ought to do is we ought to just send a message to Kelly Jones. Like, we have, haven't we? Uh, you? Well, we're all on friends Facebook. with Facebook. Yeah, that's <laughs> what I mean. Yeah. We're all Facebook friends. Yeah. One other thing about um, Image uh, was that. I remember when that all launched, we were we were freshmen in high school. And so in eighth grade, everybody was on board with, like, it's like I, my one buddy Dan Weber was all about, like, X-Force. And, you know, and then, you know, my buddies Doug and Dave were all about uh, the X-Men. And then I was more of Spider-Man and Fantastic Four. And just the next year, it was like, we're starting ninth grade, we're in a new school, and that's when they launched Image that year. And everybody broke into their section. And I just, even then, I kind of thought that. And since, in years past, I thought, you know... We loved, like, the old stuff, the Fantastic Four and Spider-Man and all that. And it was very much our generation's version of that. Because between our lunch table, we were buying every book that came out. Because they only had, like, six or seven books. Don't you remember reading Bloodstrike? And then a no, char I, character that looked like exactly Wolverine. Like Wolverine. Yeah. Sure, yeah. sure. But, I mean, oh, yeah. like, guys, you can't do that. I got... You really uh, <laughs> revolutionized... You know, artwork and stuff, yeah. but you can't take characters that you just <laughs> no. got done drawing no. and have a guy that looks like Cable and one likes Wolverine. That's not how it works. Well, uh, Kay up at Paperback Exchange was holding. I remember us all saying, okay, we want a copy of every book. And so we all had one, and then that's kind of how you saw the, the division fall into place. Like, that Shadowhawk book, my yeah. thumb's going down right now when I make that noise. <laughs> yeah. It was it was not good. Uh, well, Valentino wasn't any good even, either, <laughs> but he, he just wasn't even close. I mean, he's still he's still big in images. Yeah, you know? and this, yeah. this isn't yeah. a personal thing, but he wasn't Jim Lee, right? In any way, shape, or form. Sure, sure. I collected. I mean, the one with, I mean, the spawn, spawn, spawn. Yeah, and, and, but Max, the Max was the one that I I was the most yeah, interested. Sam in. Keith, my number Where one. Where is Sam Keith? My number one book was Savage Dragon from yeah. the moment. Yeah, and I, I like the Dragon too. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I mean, was, I, I, I collected a lot of them, but. I was on board with that. Yeah. I never remember. I don't remember then thinking about it, but it just kind of dawned on me now. I remember I bought Savage Dragon number one, two, and three of the miniseries. I bought it at Super Fresh. Like, what kind of distribution deal did those guys lock in that early yeah, wow. that their books were at the supermarket? <laughs> you know, I never, oh, they were, yeah, never they really were realized everywhere. that until just now. They were everywhere. Yeah. You know, they did that. That is sort of surprising for being you know, that breakthrough independent. They, you could find them just about anywhere. Just yeah. you know, I was yeah. a big uh, Wildcats fan. Jim yeah. Lee, yeah, yeah, I, I just, sharing. Yeah. man, I wasn't. Yeah. I, I tried to be, but I think it's I something about <laughs> you tried to be just like me. <laughs> I did. Well, hey, I'll hey, tell you right now, everybody, cats. and this is on the record. I have spent a, a, a nice portion of my life trying to be just like Gary. Yeah, That's yeah, a fact. Yeah. <laughs>
I followed Jay and I followed Jay Lee when they did that Young Blood Strike Force. I and I like Jay Lee. I, I always yeah. have when he was, he was. We were talking about drawing Namor. He went Namor. on to draw that yeah. Namor. The like Namors. Wet works. Want want. Oh, no, see, I'm, I'm like a big Luff. no. I'm a Willis. The problem yeah, with that book is it just yeah, didn't like come him. out. Yeah, that's yeah. That's oh, Willis, I, I was excited. Well, I mean, about he, that. how many family members could he have die? I mean, didn't he have like, how many hands could he have break? Didn't Remember he have like all those all those problems? <laughs> just say yeah. you're going to be late, man. Have you watched those episodes? <laughs> like this, they're like 15 minute excerpts of how the whole image thing happened. Yeah, on on it's pretty cool. I was watching. Yeah, it's great show. Yeah, how they cool. caught Valentino in the in the elevator on the way. Like yeah, and yeah. I was like, yeah, that's the only way he got on board with that team is because he had to be standing in the elevator when they were talking. Hey, you want to go along? <laughs> All right. Oh, sure. <laughs> got that one guy. <laughs> oh, that's great. So you didn't have Supreme, huh? You didn't buy that? By the second wave, dude. I was like, Tribe. Yeah. Wrong. And, uh, Wrong. Uh, but I've always wanted to read the Alan Moore run because everybody said it's phenomenal. Where it was sort of just... Supposedly, uh, it was in that book um, that I just had, that thousand yeah. comics you need to read. And I've always heard about it, because they said it was just always sort of like a Superman ripoff. And Alan Moore did a 12-issue series, and uh, I've never got a chance to read it. I read it. Alan Moore's one that did 1961. Was it 1961 or 1963? 63. Yeah. 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 I I got that. I thought that was yeah. cool. Fantastic Four book. Yeah. I got a shirt for They're it, too. Neat covers. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty neat. I was just going back and talking about that. I just... I pulled the Swamp Thing box out. I hadn't had it out in a long time, and I was going through reading the, some of the out, just the anatomy lesson and the whole Al Moore, you know, influx in the Swamp Thing and what if. And there's just those stories just way hold up. It's just a great story. It's That's just cool. really cool. Everything about it's like I, I think I wish somebody would do a contemporary version of something that's this interesting. You know, well, I always uh, I miss the boat on a lot of things because it's just not my cup of tea. But Alan Moore still writes all the time for Avatar. You know. Right. And uh, was it Jason Burroughs or some of those guys? I don't know if you guys ever see it. Hmm. It's in, in the previews, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, they're cranking out a lot of books. Yeah, and but Alan Moore writes a lot of H.P. Lovecraft-influenced things, and no one talks about it. I don't know if it's not any good. I don't know. You'd think if it was, you know, on par with his other stuff that yeah. somebody would mention it. It's like, yeah. hey, you guys are missing the boat on this stuff, and right. I never heard anybody talk about it. It's just I think there's just so much noise. I mean, yeah. it's news to me that it's in there. I, I go through that previous catalog, but I don't do it with a fine-tooth comb. I have a list of what everybody wants, and once I get that out of the way, there's a very finite amount of money to be spent on anything to take a chance on. Because well, that image book, that beef, that, that oh, that's yeah. way out of hand. Not well, for, and not I wouldn't for, order that if you the, didn't say you wanted not it. Not for the know? kiddies. I mean, it's definitely... I mean, <laughs> if they, they can make a movie out of that, that'd be amazing. Oh, shaky <laughs> king. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, did you pick up on that? Did you get that? Not yet. I have to let you read it. It's, it's yeah, good. The thing is, it's like when you get the books that are guaranteed to sell. It's like you say you want this and you want this and you want this. I order all those, then I order a few extra based on the percentages of how many of something was pre-ordered. Then there's only so much money left, and out of that money, it always makes sense to have it to buy back issues. That's financially way more secure than rolling the dice on. Four ninety nine cover price, small press books that yep. nobody asked for right. and nobody's aware of. Yep. And so I, I do what I can in this little area to throw one or two books a month on there that, you know. Well, well how, as, how as always, you have, what, 650 pages, and you, all you have is a cover, and sometimes it's not the guy who's doing it. Right. So what's cool is you can always go to Google and look up someone's art. Right. I sit there and say, sure, like when we're talking about the Doctor Strange, you know, and the new artist is coming on. So yep. I would look him up and say, Where's this going? What's it, what's his art look like? Because generally they're not going to change their style. Yeah. For the new books, that way, you, you know, I'll do that with Google Images all the time, and it'll come up and it'll bring up someone's art, and I'm like, hmm, I, this looks interesting. I kind of feel like you don't have an excuse if you're doing an indie book that doesn't necessarily have some crazy schedule, or you're picking when it comes out. I mean, the fact of the matter is, is nobody's calling up and telling somebody that's doing an independent comic. You have to have five issues done in the next two months because right. we have to put it out right, right. now. Yeah. There's no machine behind right. it. So whenever I get some of those books and I'm flipping through it and you can see somebody's probably pretty good, but they're kind of shortcutting it to get through the work, it's like, just stop. Like, I, I don't ever want to see anything you do. If you can't pour your heart into what you're trying to do there to get everybody's attention, and especially in this day and age whenever the review can happen, Literally an hour after the book hits the stands, people are out talking about it. Why would you not want to make a splash? Well, how, speaking of like ordering and numbers and stuff, how many um, 
copies of that Oblivion song did you sell? We sold a total of, because I ordered a second time, I sold 55 of them. That's pretty wild. Yeah, and I didn't have anybody that bought two that I recall. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so. Kirkman. Yeah. Yeah, wow. I thought of course, the, of course I, I walked away from that, and I thought about it. It was a really cool cover, and I looked inside, and I'm like, this isn't my cup of tea. And it's like, it's being this and that for TV, and I'm just like, I just don't buy comic books for that reason yeah, anymore. Yeah. I don't buy them for investment purposes. Yeah, You've never seen me come in here and buy two two copies of something. The guy that does the art in that, he he and his brother had released a, a book through um, through Image, and uh, the name escapes me, but I had I loaned it to you. Do you remember the trade paperback? It was the guy in every, every issue... It's like that's how he died, but it was like going through his life. Does yeah. That, remember that book? Yeah. That's the same artist. And that book didn't... Oh, I didn't even make that connection. Yeah, well, because that book has a ton of action in it, and this guy was drawing... It was more of a romance. It was yeah, more of an atmosphere. Yeah. And so I don't necessarily think the art in it's bad. It just doesn't play to the strength of the artist himself. No, I, I didn't say it was bad. I just said... just not right. You're not on board right. with that yeah. Yeah. scenario. Yeah. 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 Well, talking about people plonking away for years and years and doing the same thing over and over again and trying to keep things on time. Um, I've been Sounds like you're talking at, about my phone bill. Looking at a lot of, uh, yeah, looking at a lot of the um, the, the uh, Kickstarters and stuff that Tim Tower's doing. I just shared a big thing. Did, did you see that vigil cover? For, oh, yeah. Oh, man. That's great. And he's actually, he's done enough Kickstarters now, and I think there's enough following, enough people supporting him. He's actually going to go through, through Diamond, I think, mm -hmm. like the next go around this next thing he's going to submit is going to be actually through diamond cool you've got so, to really be hustling not to use diamond yeah, yeah. you're out there doing the yeah. conventions all the time i'd be surprised just one of those things whenever it, we used to set up at the convention it was free pittsburgh comic-con yeah and then they started charging 150 dollars and then you'd have to have hotel rooms i mean you're going to be five six seven eight hundred dollars for time to eat for a weekend yeah, yeah. just setting up and selling 30 books yeah. If you sell that many at yeah. a convention, so it's tough out there. But if you got money behind you, you know to get to push through. But that's the same sure. with music or anything else. Sure, you, wanna, you know you see Shark Tank and all that. These guys put a lot of money into patent and, and getting this thing because they're making things that have never been. It's not like you just took a bike and took three tire or put another tire on it or something, right? You know, you know with some welding, you know these guys are something that's never existed before. So you have to have it developed and. Yeah, that's a lot of money, and the same with comic books. You know, got there and schlep something that's not Marvel, DC, Dark Horse, or something. Yeah. You don't get the you don't get all the money from going that way, but at least you have the distribution. And as soon as you put image on it, automatically X amount of people are going to look at it. Right. Right. Yeah, for sure. There was a book out the last year that Image did. It was called Violence, and that book got me right away. I really, really enjoyed it, and it went through on the fifth issue they released in the back it said we really appreciate everybody sticking with us this isn't the end but it's the end for now or something and then the sixth issue was when they had to close it up and it's like man they you got through your first story arc basically and it was all really good well they and probably also reviews. by the skin of their teeth and probably lost their you know you, you see it all the time i mean i've read a million interviews with uh sort of like uh, what was the big group tlc very successful yeah. you ever seen behind the music and they were so far in debt but a lot of these bands, you know, Kiss, you're talking about Bill Alcoin put everything on his, uh, their manager put everything on credit cards. I mean, until Kiss Alive hit, they were so far in debt. Wow. And if that did, if Kiss Alive didn't break the way that it did, and then become a phenomenon it did, uh, there are people in a whole lot of financial ruin yeah. after that. So it, it's tough. Yeah, It's cool that you can uh, print books, color books, and that's looking behind you. You know, a lot of these off-brand um, comics are look just as good as sure the big the big names if not better yeah yeah but, i mean just the quality of the printing and everything is what yeah. i'm talking no, about yeah, i was talking about some of the yeah. art like you know yeah. <clears throat> ghost rider well and i i had thought for a while now that the paradigm on this is <laughs> is if you're trying to do it on your own completely then you basically you share it on social media you you get you develop a following when it's free and then once you have your built-in audience then when you present something to that audience that's printed and ready to go you already have a pool of people that automatically care about it. Sure. It's almost like yeah, expanding your friends and family group. Yeah, they're on board already. Yep. Yeah. 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 Well, and I think that in music, like I said, I, I always uh, correlate, you know, my two favorite things, music and comics, but a lot of uh, bands, you know, when you sell 10,000 CDs out of your trunk or your car, you know, it shows and everything, then, then Sony and 
Columbia and all those people start, Warner Brothers start taking notice of that kind of thing. Sure. You know, luckily all of us uh, independent people have Facebook and social media and a lot of free avenues to promote it. But still, you put Marvel on it, all of a sudden you got a whole different, you're up a whole bunch of steps. Yeah. You know, oh, in yeah. recognition. Sure. Well, and I think now in scrutiny. Yeah. There, you know, if you, I think that if you have an image book and it sucks, you might get four or five issues out. If you have a Marvel book and it sucks, they, they're going to send number two and half of it won't even be done. Yeah. <laughs> they're like, no, you're, no. Yeah. You're out here. I was listening to, uh, Mark Marin does a podcast called WTF with Mark Marin and he had Ted Danson on there. And he was talking about how if Cheers had come out today, they would have gotten to episode two and they would have canceled it. He's like, that show took a season and a half to develop an audience where they weren't losing money in advertising. He's like, they don't, they just don't have the, the patience anymore or the discipline anymore. That's something I've noticed. I mean, I think everybody has. It's not like I'm coming up with some great new idea. But yeah, there's very little patience for anything. There's very, very little, you know, time to allow something to develop. You yeah. Know, it's just, it, if it, it just goes, whoosh, you know. Yeah. Well, in, the some, side, in some cases, it might be good. But in other yeah. cases, yeah. you might miss out on something that's really cool, you know. It just, sure. It, it, it didn't yeah, but you think on the other side of that, that things catch fire much quicker. Yeah, that's yeah, true. That's like true. You said, like yeah. you said, an hour after something comes out, you're like, man, run to the store and get this. How many times do you guys, I got to pull that, I got to pull this. Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. As soon as you hear news on, I don't, I don't follow any of those sites and stuff, but as soon as you hear Blah, blah, blah is going to be in a certain movie. All the comic book stores, yeah. if they're quicker than the customers, are pulling that, yeah. you know, the first Harlequin or something like that. Yeah. Right? Well, what you said that first Cheetah is going for. Yeah, first Cheetah, that book three weeks ago was selling for $2 or $3 from Wonder Woman. It was like 1986, Wonder Woman issue number seven. And uh, I sold two of them here for 25 bucks. I got one on the wall for 30 and I had right. another one go off on eBay for 35 Yeah, I'm going to throw one. Said, what's, what's New Mutants 14? Magic? So it's the first appearance of Magic. The oh, yeah. Magic. I know, mm-hmm. If you go look through your run, 14. I'll bet you it's there. I'm look right no, now. it's not. <laughs> <laughs> I already looked for it for a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the podcast. I, wow. I just want. <laughs> <laughs> Just, All right, guys, everybody come back and hey, sit down. Get out, get Gary, yeah, I just, come on. I just wanted to know what was going on. I looked and it, it, you have the whole run and that book is missing. Well, if you were getting sleepy, you're not now. <laughs> action packed. <laughs> As in, yeah. To make this perfectly action, clear. Among other things. Yeah, nobody actually left the table. <laughs> yeah, we're still <laughs> sitting. Yeah. We, we, <laughs> Our laziness is no definitely way. overriding uh, any uh, <laughs> desire to yeah. cash in. You know, I I had um, audio sound effects. I had uh, away. I had somebody that that you know was helping me out here at the shop and um, uh, leave that uh, shall remain nameless. But somebody was helping out. Somebody walked in here and picked up uh, that Thanos book with uh, Frank Castle's Ghost Rider. Yep. Yeah. That book at one point was selling for like hundred and ten dollars or something on eBay. Somebody walked in here. I had four of them on the wall, and they bought all four. And I, I, you know, and it was my fault. I, I took full responsibility on that. And I said, "Look, moving forward, we have a new rule. You can buy one copy of a new book unless you are somebody that's that's holding having books held, and you're specifically asking for more than one. Because I want to be able to meet the demand of everybody. That's just, and that, that's the way a lot of shops are. Yeah. Um, also, when somebody walks in and tries to buy four or five or six copies of the same title, that means." A no and B <laughs> pull them <laughs> yeah. until we find out what's going yeah, on. That's up. all. I mean, I you know, I'd like to think I'm a pretty fair guy when it comes to that stuff, but I'm allowed I'll to be fair because I because people aren't ripping me off. <laughs> show up when you're not here. <laughs> I'll, I'll show up when you're not here. <laughs> he was like, "All right, I'll buy one and I'll just bend the other four. <laughs> Great Caesar's ghost, jumping Caesar's catfish. What are we doing here? Hey, speaking of books I really wanted to give a chance to, The Crow, Memento More. That book rolled in, and uh, James O'Barr's name's nowhere on it. He has nothing to do with it that I can tell. Is he thankful for that? Uh, I would be if I were him, because I'm embarrassed <laughs> to have it on the wall. I can't imagine being a crea- uh, associated with it creatively. It sucks. The art in it's horrible. Well, I, I was going to ask that when we were talking about Schwarzenegger and joking about that. Um, obviously, Terminator, Aliens, Predator, The Crow. Um Obviously, the, the the crow comes from a comic book, which, but on the other side of that, whenever they bring comic books out, have you guys had a lot of success with comic books from movies? Uh, when you're talking about the Six Million Dollar Man, that can, you know, is, is any of this? Does anybody read anything? I know, I know you read Darth Vader. 
Of course, that, Star Wars fans are when de, You know, when I got a little spoiled and misled, I think, because when Deadpool came out, it was right when I was first opening the store, within the first several months. Yeah. I sold out of every single thing that had Deadpool's face on it. I mean, everything sold. And I thought, well, hell, that's the way this is going to be moving forward. Then, I don't remember what the next thing was, but whatever it was, it was a huge... Tank. Failure. Yeah. Uh, Avengers. I don't know if it's like, man, the Avengers movie's huge and we're going to sell a ton of it. I don't know if it's because they just flooded the market with it. There was Great Lakes Avengers and Uncanny Avengers and all new, all different Avengers and Avengers. And they had all these titles to where if I'm ordering three copies of each one and then all three copies sit there, that's like 21 bucks at $4 a piece. You know, I mean, it just, yeah, it's just a math. huge loss. Yeah, do the math. And so, they're going with the movies and the comics where DC seems to be on board with Justice League and those kind of, you're talking about Superman, Batman, those books all sell very well. But uh, Marvels don't. No. Well, and, and, as, as you were talking about, we love that Thor that just gone down, but, mm -hmm. you know, that was that was a big, big story going on. But, I mean, you know, Daredevil and a lot of these, yeah, lot of these nothing, books people don't read. Nothing from the movies since Deadpool has jumped the the books on the, the new books on the wall. Mm -hmm. Now, I was surprised to find out this weekend that the old Black Panther books have skyrocketed. Um, and i got to believe that has something to do with the movie. But, um, like, Doctor Strange, that movie was awesome. I really liked that movie. Mm -hmm. I know you did, too. Oh, Doctor Strange. But you phenomenal. know what? Not a single person walked in here and bought a copy of a Doctor Strange book other than you, and you were buying them anyway. Exactly. Right. Avengers, that book was just a pit, a financial hole, all the way down. And then all of a sudden, they started getting on this really good story, and it's starting to build some momentum. And, like, you pick it up. I have four other people to buy it. Yeah. So selling five copies of Avengers each month, Sounds piddly, but I wasn't selling any for the last yeah. two years. Um, same well, thing. There have been great Avenger stories back in the day. Sure, sure, but but nothing. But the movie's not propelling anybody in here to buy them. I guess yeah, is what I'm not, saying. You're not making a connection. And like I said, no. I don't go on those sites a lot, but you guys talk about a lot of these things that are um, what are they, what are they call uh, not streaming. Um, Trending? Trending, yeah, that's it. Yeah. That's the word. Yeah, that's yeah. That's, if that's, if but, it, but but you hear those things and you're like, I want to pick that up. You know, but a lot of uh, you guys are talking about the Red Goblin. You yeah. know, for me, a trade paperback is going to be cool. Well, and that the thing is, though, that's a completely indigenous to the comic book world. There isn't a movie with Red Goblin in it. There, same right. thing with Batman. Like Batman's on the off year right now yeah. of of there being some big movie or something. But if it's Batman, Star Wars, or Spider Man right now, and it's on the wall, it's leaving. Like, well, I'll tell you one thing that's helping Batman sell right now because I still get it is the artist. I mean, yeah. obviously, you know, Janin's doing a great job on it. You know, and like us, you know, like you don't own a Superman book. I'm not yeah. mocking that; it's not your bag. But, but I've I'm, I followed Gleason from when he did the Batman and Robin stuff, and he's doing he's not doing as much with Superman right now. As a matter of fact, he's writing some of it, but he always does the covers. Right. And Gleason's stuff, man, is just off the chain. I mean, that well, you and I whole share Bizarro that Bizarro cover like a month ago. Mm -hmm. That was good stuff. Man. You and I yeah. share the same thing. I you really like him as an artist, and right. I would totally respect that because yeah. I will do that as well. If I, yeah. you know, I will follow an artist through a title, and if they, you know, jump onto this or that, you know, whatever, I will follow it around. That's just like and, Carnage. You know, yeah. Perkins doing a heck of a job on Carnage. Yeah. And it's like you know those covers are just like, off the yeah. chain. And then he went and did Iron Fist. I don't own. I didn't ever own. Right. I never own. I never owned an Iron Fist comic until Perkins went to right. Iron Fist. So guess what? Started buying Iron yeah. Fist. You know, it's just mm -hmm. dark. Uh, I, I can't really explain yeah. the the art. Kind of like the Alexander guy doing Spawn. Very well dark and just all over the place. He's that covers. I've cut you. I'm looking around yeah. and I'm going. That cover just absolutely just freaking pops. Well, it, it, <laughs> if you look at everything that's around it and you yeah. see that, I mean, not taking away from that thing, Human Torch up there. Yep. That's pretty cool. But what uh, Spider Gwen? Yeah. yeah, I don't even I don't even know. I know Chip buys that. That's phenomenal. That's yeah. just that's just great. You can't see this, folks, but it's yeah. pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah. I say it all the time. I've said it a million times. I might as well say it again. Um, if you're looking for a book that has great story, great art, and is very consistent, and I'm proud to say it is Spawn. The Todd Father. Absolutely. The Todd Father. The Todd Father is doing it, doing it good. And you know what? He's letting other people do it. Yeah, I mean, he's got his yeah, hand in it, yeah. but he's letting other. Yeah, he's people still do there. It. Yeah, he's you know writing and doing yeah. occasional plots or whatever. But yeah. yeah, I like those things at the end of the book. It's like you could win a ten minute Skype with Todd McFarlane. Yeah, that kind of thing. It's pretty cool. Yeah. It's well yeah. packaged. Well, well, well done. Yeah. You have Spawn. Love it. We're just kind of, kind of talking about the uh, following artists following around. Artists around. Yeah. Like oh, yeah. oh, you know what's funny? I just thought about. This. I can't believe it. It just struck me. Isn't like. 
Isn't the new movie coming out like the end of this month? 27? 27? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm just like, I, I, I started going, I'm yeah. like, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't, you know, time. I'll be like, there. Tch. There's a feeling I had about Infinity War, and it was funny because I was on Twitter, and there's there's a lot of people, it's not like a, an original thought, but it's this idea that there's some closure in this movie, and I know they're going to drag it out to the second half of the movie oh, next yeah. year, but it is, like, there's a lot of people saying they're marveled out a little bit, and I don't but know. But I think the anticipation... And I said this the same with Black Panther and Wonder Woman because you know I heard the rants about all of it, about both of those, and and I thought they were both good films, but they did not change my life. Right. You know, well, when, whenever, like I said, whenever you see something like Pulp Fiction, I referred to that. <laughs> you're like, wow. Yeah. I that agree. I've never seen before. Right. And I'm telling you, Infinity War. I'm not going to downplay it because I, I hope I'm surprised. But but I'm looking for something new, <laughs> yeah. and I think it's going to be more of the same, and it's going to be the. It's going to be the end cap to all these because I, yeah. I know a lot of the actors are moving on and Marvel's going to have a problem because then they got to reboot everything. You're oh. looking for that moment of a, I just shot Marvin in the face kind of thing. You know? Well, <laughs> you know what? I think the movie's going to be just incredible and the idea that all of these characters that we've loved our whole lives are all on the same screen together, that's going to be an amazing thing. My thing is on the other side of that. What's your what's your encore? like? Yeah. Where are we going where from going here? From yeah. And how many so people are going to reboot everything? And how many people are going to fall? Well, I think that what oh, they're going to no. do, Not yeah, dude, number one. That, well, here's what's going to happen: <laughs> is in the second part of Infinity War, there's going to be the introduction of characters that end up carrying the mantle. I think moving forward, I don't it would think, be wise to do that. Oh, no, for sure, they got it all. It right. would be wise to do that because I understand the marvelled out thing. Yeah. I do. I get it. I mean, these are characters I've loved, or you know, just that whole association of mine. Almost my entire whole life. My, ever since you can my argument, yeah, you know. though, is not that it's going to be bad. It's it's still going to be great. It's just after a while, you start to get yeah. just a little Where glazed over. Where like you, you like you guys can continue to make the best superhero movies ever made. Well, we talked about that. I was like yeah. punch drunk after. I'm like I'm a little punch. I'm yeah. a little more I need a, punch drunk. I need a minute. Yeah, yeah. exactly. That's <laughs> I guess what I mean. I, I need a hold on. As I said, Ooh. I think this is going to be the end cap. Yeah. This whole thing. It's come to climax right here. Here we go. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of speculation on like you know people dying and stuff and yeah. stuff like that. So I guess it's just at the wait. Yeah. And there again, you can't kill characters. Yeah. Please don't do that. Yeah. Well, on that Let's note, it's time to kill the podcast oh. for this week. Oh. <laughs> I'm sure those are the sentiments of everyone listening right now in their car, in their car, SUV, or trailer. Right. So <laughs> we will. Uh, the gauntlet has been. We'll be back. I know why we're standing. Yeah, yeah, the boss uh, arrived. Uh, yeah, the warden just it's over now, guys. Yeah. Bro, are you jumping in on the podcast here? Okay, nerds. Mom's Quit. here. I'm a different kind of nerd than you guys. Oh, okay. We we embrace different kinds of nerds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Give us a piece of your nerd nerdery. Yeah, jeez. Come on, yeah. on the spot. Yeah. What kind of nerd are you? Nothing. Psych nerd. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, we don't There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> no, not at all. On that note... I'm George, and I was joined today with Tim. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Gary. Uh, I'll, yeah, I'm with him. <laughs> and Walt. How do you follow that? <laughs> and Rail stopped in for just a moment. Hey. Hi, Rail. You're welcome. We'll see you guys next week. <laughs> Girl.